Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papasaglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Tuesday in the second week after Pentecost. Let us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham our ancestor according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who, without works, trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness, then, pronounced only on the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised. We say, faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the ancestor of all who believe without being circumcised and who thus have righteousness reckoned to them. And likewise, the ancestor of the circumcised, who are not only circumcised, but who also followed the example of the faith that our ancestor Abraham had before he was circumcised. Here ends the lesson. In today's reading, Paul continues to make the case that God intended from the very beginning for all people to have the opportunity to choose God. It makes sense that he would begin by looking at Abraham as the patriarch of the Jewish faith to show that a traditional Jewish understanding of Abraham missed the fullness of his righteousness and the people of God as God intended from the beginning of creation. Abraham was counted as righteous because of his faith in God. His place in history and prominent place in the story of God and God's people is not because of anything that he had done and was not because of his circumcision, not because of any obedience to a law, but it was rather in virtue of a promise made to him by God. As a result, Abraham became the father of all believers as his faith was confirmed as the type of Christian faith that was to come. Because of that grace and favor, Abraham is the prime example from the Old Testament of someone who has no reason to boast. The rabbis taught that Abraham had such an abundance of merit from his works that his descendants would benefit in all future generations. Paul took that teaching and the teaching that assumed Abraham was justified by works, and as such had something to boast about, and showed that his boasting was only before other people and not before God. His point was that while a person could accomplish righteousness through works, it would never be something they could boast about before God. Abraham nor his descendants were in a position to boast of his works in God's presence. Paul quoted Genesis 15.6, where it says that Abraham's faith in God and his promise was credited to him as righteousness. And this happened because he believed. 
God imputed or credited righteousness to his account. Abraham was justified, not because he worked for it, but because he trusted God just as we must do in our day. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturday afternoons or 8 and 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, please plan to join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.